I'm being an exciting person today. No, I'm not. It's Saturday and I'm in the lab. In my muffin lab. And I'm um, fixing my brow effects. This is this is my old mess because I didn't want didn't want the lines. I don't want to stay in the, the lines. Let me do me. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time. I've spent so much time in the lab for the last couple of weeks, and like my social life just hasn't been there. Not really. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucks. But this is also the shit show of my assignment. And everything after this is going to be just so much better. But for all those out there who don't know what bryophytes, it, bryophytes are, let me show you. Yes. Okay. So this, let's just see this as a bryophyte. And... Of course, it's not, this is not as real size. Like, um, I have a lot of bryophytes to show you here, but here's one. I don't know if you can. Yeah, here's one. So you see, it's not, it's not the biggest thing in the universe, but if we enlarge it, this is basically what we're stuck with. Either uh, when we're when we're actually talking about mosses and not just bryophytes in general, because it's with bryophytes you have the hornworts and the liverworts as well. So with mosses, this is it. And these aren't real roots because mosses don't have that, uh, but they're sort of their anchor to keep them to the ground or to the rocks or whatever they're growing on. And then you can, they, mosses usually have the system of like a stem and some leaves. And in the top here, in the very top, you can see that there's sort of an organ. And that is the sporophyte. Because this entire thing is haploid, which means, because um, humans are diploid. And that means that we have two sets of our genes. Uh, so if one isn't working, then you can use the other. But this one is haploid, which means it only has one set of genes. So if something doesn't work, then this one is dead. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and in the top here is what we call, uh, like, it's a part of the gametophyte. And it's either male or female. And of course, it can grow on top and it can grow, like, all over. It could be... Uh, like the females are usually the ones on top and then you could have the males entangled in here or you could have the males on another plant um, but anyway the the male uh, has a similar structure and produces um, like sort of sperm cells and then the egg cells are produced by the female um, and then a little sperm cell comes over here and fertilizes it and when that happens, um, out of the gametophyte grows the sporophyte because after it's been fertilized, it has those two sets of genes. So now it's diploid. And then this is the sporophyte. It grows a long stem, usually. Sometimes it can be really short. Sometimes it's almost non-existent. And then it has this spore house on the top where it produces its spores, which we can or somehow compare them with seeds of a flower, but the, um, the spores that come out will be haploid again. So it's kind of a half seed, um, but it's definitely really cool. And for the entire time that this part is alive, it's dependent on the gametophyte. So if that dies, then this also dies, of course. And then the spores go land somewhere and then they germinate and we find a new gametophyte. So that's basically the life history of bryophytes. So what I'm looking at is when the sporophyte is produced, how much energy goes into it? Because in some areas they may be able to put aside more energy to it and then this stem would be longer 
and then in some areas maybe you don't have that much energy left over after just surviving so it might be like really really short so what I'm doing is I'm taking this uh, the bryophytes and I'm just sorting them and finding some species that are in as many of my plots as possible and I put them in this little tiny bag and then in the lab I'm gonna separate this bit from this bit and I'm gonna weigh them separately so that I know how much percentage this uh, is from this and then I can see in all of my plots if there's something that makes a significant difference. Because I have uh, information about if it's really moist, if the pH is really high, if the conductivity of the soil is really high. And if you don't know what conductivity is, it's basically uh, how well it would lead power. So anything such as minerals would make it go faster, right? And that makes it... Uh, higher conductivity, but also it needs minerals to grow, so it's a really good uh, thing to know. So I'm really excited about when I get the results. I'm gonna learn some new stuff, and hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> I will get uh, a result that I can use to conclude with anything. Because sometimes with science, the only conclusion you can reach is. I need to do more research on this. <laughs> and of course it's a valid conclusion and it's a really good conclusion to make if you know that you don't have enough information to support any other kind of uh, conclusion so you don't put false facts out there. But yeah, I would like to reach a conclusion that would be very cool. <laughs>